Okay, so today the plan is to we're going to look at the idea of the tax pressures of businesses course. Um, and the main reason in terms of looking at this is that we found that quite a lot of people are having um, some issues with this course in particular, in particular areas of it, and especially because of the things that have changed between the fact of going over to um, Qual 22. Um, and I think the main thing now is that actually the focus has changed from just effectively being sort of box filling exercise and filling in a um, VAT return to actually looking at once we've got a VAT return, how do we make sure we can reconcile it? How do we make sure we can make manual adjustments um, and actually what is um, needed or any changes that are going to be needed to a return? And I think that kind of mirrors how actually things are changing overall in terms of how VAT returns are done, um, especially with all the things with MTD, um, is that majority of the work is done by the software in terms of just producing the return itself and putting everything in the box. Um, it's actually the analysis of it and working out is it correct is actually the bit that's important nowadays. Um, and so, as I said, we're going to look at a particular area of the course and look at sort of what understanding and what knowledge and things you're going to need to have and what things you're going to need to be able to include. Um, one thing I'll just mention as well is that because it's now changed, because it's less of a sort of box filling exercise of putting stuff in and doing that, is that that I would say you do need to have a kind of basis of bookkeeping there and knowing effectively when we're talking about um, assets and liabilities and things like that and knowing what type of accounts, where these accounts are going to be. So I wouldn't suggest, if you don't have the, that kind of basis beforehand, I wouldn't suggest this is the sort of the first course for a sort of level three, um, unless you've already got the sort of level two background um, behind you already, or that kind of level of bookkeeping knowledge already. Um, along with the VAT, which is the bit I've been mentioning most of the case now, there is now also obviously the payroll part, which has come into this course. Um, I'm not going to focus on anything to do with the, the payroll part, just to highlight that um, within the specification, there is the idea that you will have to probably perform some form of calculations to do with the payroll, as well as just having the understanding as well. And obviously with the VAT part, you will have to do calculations for that part as well. Right then, so let's have a look at the section we look at today. So I'm going to look at this idea of types of supply. So we're going to look at what are the types of supply and also the idea of location of supply and work through. And as Jane said, at certain points, I'll stop. And if we've got any questions, then we can answer those as we go through. So when we're looking at the types of supply, there are three different um, types of supply we can have, OK, or categories we can include in terms of our supply. And this is true if we're looking at either goods or services. OK, and we'll look at both of those later on, especially when we're looking at the location of supply whether it's a goods or whether they are services become important later on. So the three categories we've got, we've got things that are outside the scope, we've got things that are exempt, and we've got things that are taxable. And within taxable, we can break those down as well. And we'll look at that in a little bit. So let's work through these ideas. If things are outside the scope for VAT, Effectively, they have nothing to do with VAT whatsoever. So things like wages or dividends, these have nothing to do with VAT. They're not included in anything to do with VAT, so they are outside of the scope. They'll never excuse me, be involved with anything to do with the VAT, so they'll never be included in any calculations or anything you need to consider for VAT. Then next to that, so that's our first idea, is the idea of things that are exempt. Now, things that are exempt, things that are not taxable supplies. OK, so they're slightly different to being outside the scope. And we can we will have to look at calculations involving things to do with exempt supplies. But they still do not attract any VAT. There's no VAT included with them. So in terms of things that are exempt, so these are things like um, insurance, 
um, postal services, um, education, these things are exempt from VAT. Um, so they have no VAT. If you are have a business that is doing only exempt supplies, okay, so we've not got any taxable um, supplies within our business, then you cannot register for VAT. Okay, so if the only thing you do is say insurance, then your business cannot register for VAT. Now, that may be good because therefore you don't have to charge VAT, but it also could be bad because you then can't reclaim any VAT on any of the purchases you're making. Okay, so those are the first two types of supply. We then got our third type of supply, which is our taxable supplies. So the taxable supplies fit into three categories. They're either going to be standard rated, and that'll be at 20%, they'll be reduced rated, or they'll be zero rated. Now, in terms of that, and in terms of knowing where they fit in, it'll be made obvious in terms of the question what type rate is going to apply to them okay but these are things which are effectively anything that's not exempt anything that's not outside the scope fits into the idea of a taxable supply now if you are making taxable supplies and selling taxable supplies then if you do that you can register for vat now you don't necessarily have to if you go above a limit and that uh, limit um, you'll need to know and is included in the extra information, okay, is then that you must register. Okay, so if you go above the limit, you must register. If you're below the limit, then it's your choice whether you want to register or not. And there'll be reasons for why you want to do it. Now, a few things to make sure are clear about. The idea of just being clear about the idea of things that are zero rated, and things that are exempt. Okay, so things that are zero rated, they are still being taxed. There's still VAT on them. It's just that that VAT is at zero percent. Okay, so they're still we're still charging a rate of VAT. It's just the fact it's zero percent. So therefore, there isn't an amount. There isn't an amount to pay. Okay, rather than exempt, where there isn't any VAT included at all. So if you are somebody who is just doing zero rated so you're wholly providing zero rated goods you can register for VAT okay now if you are just making zero rating supplies that's going to be kind of the win-win situation in terms of VAT because you do not have to charge VAT or you have to charge VAT sorry at zero percent to your customers okay so there's no extra amount that's included but all of your purchases any VAT that you pay on your purchases you can then reclaim Okay, so therefore it's win-win for you that there's no extra amount that's going on top of your um, onto your charge, but any VAT that you are paying when you are making your purchases, you can then reclaim. Okay, so just a quick question, which I will um, ask myself for now, and then I will check with anyone if we've got any other questions. Is as I said we've got this postal company which is making only exempt supplies. If, as we said, they're only exempt supplies, then they cannot register for VAT. Okay, so only if you have some form of taxable supply can you actually register for VAT. Just worry there, Jane, have we got any questions at the moment from anybody or should we carry on?
Yeah, we will. We will. Yeah. 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 No, I will after after the next section. Then yeah, I'll I'll stop again and ask and see if we've got anything else. Okay. So um, we've looked at just now, obviously, the idea of what types of supply there are in terms of whether it's uh, outside the scope, exempt, or taxable. What we're going to look at um, on the other side is where is that place of supply? Okay, so we're looking at whether we've got something normally, in this case, we're looking at whether it's within the UK or whether it is um, overseas. So what we're going to look at is um, then if we can then work out where we uh, say the place of supply is, we can then say what type of VAT needs to be charged and what rate of VAT is charged on it. Okay, so that is how it affects VAT. Now, we said that we've got goods or services. So if we are supplying goods, it's simply, and the simple part of it is where they are dispatched. Okay, so whether they are, where, wherever they're dispatched, that'll be our place of supply. Okay, so if they come from the UK, we send them from the UK, then that means that we use the UK as our place of supply for goods. Now it gets slightly more tricky if we're looking at services. Okay, and it depends whether it's a service, it depends on who you are supplying that service to. So at first intuition, we're a business. If we're supplying our services, okay, to another business or what we'd call business to business, okay, so if it's from one business to another business, then the supply is wherever the customer is. Now, they could still be in the UK, they could be overseas, okay? So if it's one business to another business, then we look at the location of the customer. If, however, it's from a business to a consumer, okay, so if it's to an individual, let's say, or not to another business, so business to consumer, then the supply is where the supplier is. Okay, so if, as first intuition, we're supplying this to a consumer, and even if they're overseas, then the location of the um, service and the supplier of the service is coming from the supplier, us, so from the UK. Okay, so there's just slight difference of whether it's a goods or a service, and whether it's from a business to a business, or whether it's from a business to consumer. So goods are always from where you dispatch them, so services, if it's to another business, then it's wherever the customer is. If it's to a consumer from a business in terms of services, then it's wherever the supplier of the service is. Now, why on earth does that actually make any difference? Now, if it's from a UK business to another UK business, on the whole, it's not going to make any difference at all. What we're looking at is the idea of when things happen internationally. So. If we are selling overseas, then this is what we call an export. Okay, so any sale overseas is an export. Now, again, we need to look at whether we are exporting as goods or whether we're exporting a service. If it's goods that we are exporting, very nicely, they're always just at zero rate. Okay, so they are taxable. So remember, zero rated is taxable but it's taxable at 0%. So if we're exporting goods, then it's at 0%. Okay, so there's zero rated at 0%. Now, if they are services, now this is where it links into this part here. It depends on whether we are exporting the service to a business, are we exporting the service to a consumer? Now, if you are exporting it to a business, then as we said, then the place of supply is wherever that customer is. So if the customer is overseas because we're exporting, then they, we will charge the VAT for where the customer is. Now, they are not in the UK, so there is no UK VAT. That doesn't mean there won't be necessarily any tax to pay. There may be tax in that country. But in terms of UK VAT, which is what we care about, there isn't any charge because we're looking at the fact of the service happening where the, the where the customer is. OK, so where that business is. If, however, it is business to. Consumer, 
then we care about where the supply is happening. And we are in the UK, we are exporting the service. So therefore we will be charging the VAT that we would charge in the UK. So if you're exporting goods, then it's just at 0%. If you're exporting a service, then if it's to another business, then we care about where the consumer, where the customer is, and therefore there's no UK VAT. If we're doing it to a consumer, so not to a business, then it's where we are supplying the service, which is the UK, so there is UK VAT charged. So that's one side of it. And then we'll just have a look at the other part. So what happens if we are making purchases? So if we are importing something into the UK, okay, and there's again, a few little extra bits to include with this. So if we're looking at goods, so if you're importing goods into the UK, the way it's dealt with is that we charge the, the idea of VAT as if they had been bought in the UK. So it's the same rate as if they've been bought in the UK. So that's the rate that we we'll apply to them. Now, in terms of when do we charge this VAT, there are two options we can do. So there's option one, which was the kind of old option of how you always used to have to do this, is that when the goods come into the UK, okay, so when they get to the port or the airport, then you have to pay the VAT that's due on them then. Okay, so you physically pay that VAT to HMRC when they enter the UK. You can then reclaim that VAT on your next VAT return. Therefore, overall, it all nets out. But there is a kind of timing delay between when you've got to pay your VAT at the fact of when they enter the country to when you can put it on your and reclaim it effectively on your next VAT return. The other option in terms of this is what's called postponed accounting. OK, so as I said, from the 1st of January 2021, you've been able to do this idea of postponed accounting. Now, rather than paying the VAT when they come in, what you do is that you put the output VAT on the return and you also claim the input VAT as well on the same return. OK, so it just all goes on one return and it cancels it out. Yeah, that's uh, the de minimis rules. Um, so the de minimis rules are just talking about what happens if we've got um, exempt supplies and also taxable supplies. Um, it wasn't in particular something I was going to cover. I, what I would do is I can talk about it a bit later on when we come on to the task part as well. Um, what it is is just saying effectively how much can we recover in terms of our of that. Sorry? Yeah? Can you still hear me? Can you still hear me? Hello? Can you still hear me? I've still got sound on mine. Okay. Okay. So what we'll do then is we'll carry on. We'll look at the next bit for now, I'll talk about the minimum stuff a bit later on if we've got a bit of time. Um, um, we'll just have a look at the idea of the other, the final part of the purchases, uh, which is if we've got a service which we are importing into the UK. So what we're looking at here, so we've got our service being received by a VAT registered business from another country. The supply is therefore deemed to be made in the UK. 
So if you think about it, that business is supplying it to us. So it's a business business. So therefore it's where we are. So therefore there should be VAT charged on it. Now the person that's supplying it to us, okay, so the supplier doesn't charge VAT. What they do is they include our VAT number, the customer's VAT number on the invoice and the statement that they is this idea of reverse charges. Okay, so it would then be the customer. So if they're supplying it to us as a business in the UK, then it would be our customer's idea that we then have to include the VAT as a reverse charge. And what that means is that we charge VAT and we also claim it back. Okay, so it goes as an input again and an output on the same return. So that's what happens with a service. Okay, so let's have a look at our um, couple of little questions on this then. So X Limited is a VAT registered business. They're providing standard supplies in the UK. So we've got the company that is VAT registered, they're importing goods from overseas. So if we're importing things that are from overseas, which would be standard rated if purchased in the UK, and the VAT would be four and a half thousand. So if, remember, when we are importing goods, then we treat it at the same rate that the VAT would apply in the UK. So if they were in the UK, we're told they're standard rated, so they're still treated as standard rated here. So what happens with the VAT? Well, this is the idea we've got a two step idea or two option idea. One is that when they come into the country, then we have to pay over the VAT and we can then reclaim that on our next um, VAT return. Or we can do the idea of the postponed accounting and we can put both input and output of the four and a half thousand on our VAT return. But whichever method you use, overall, you've got to have an output of four and a half thousand and input of four and a half thousand. So therefore, overall, we haven't got any change in the VAT. Okay, so there's four and a half going out, four and a half coming in. Overall, there's no net VAT effect. And our next example, we've got the idea of, with this, the idea of selling standard rating goods to a customer who is an individual okay and who is located overseas what is the VAT on this now in terms of this question the fact that they're an individual I don't really mind about the fact that is goods is the main part in terms of this if we are exporting goods then the export of goods is always at zero rated Okay, um, I've just got a few possible questions to have a look through and then we'll look at a task in this. Jaden, I don't know if you can still hear me or not. Have we got any questions? That's fine. Have we got any other questions at the moment? Yeah, what I'll do is we'll wait for this a moment and we'll, I'll go through these questions and then before I look at the task, I'll have a brief talk about the uh, the de minimis rules and how that links the idea of our taxable supplies. Okay, let's continue and look at our next part then. So, Practice examples of questions um, that we can look through, that look over the bits we've just concluded. Now, the first question we're looking at as well, what happens if we've only got exempt supplies? Now, if there's only exempt, there's nothing that is attracting any VAT, then you can't be involved in the VAT system, so you cannot 
register for VAT. Okay, so we can't register for VAT if we're only making exempt supplies. So if there's any form of taxable supplies, then we can register. And we'll, we'll talk about this idea of the de minimis rules. That's if we've got the idea of taxable and exempt in the same case. And I'll talk about, as I said, that briefly after these um, examples. So next idea is if we've got customer is a business place of supply of the services received is where the something belongs. If the customer receives supplies or services for non-business purposes, then it's where something else belongs. So if we are looking at a business to business, then we're looking at where the customer is. If we're looking at a supply service to a consumer, okay, so not to business, it is where the supplier is located. Okay, so business to business, wherever the customer, business to consumer, wherever the supplier is, and that's just for services that we care about it for. So let's link that into this idea here. So we've got customer has to provide a VAT number to prove that they are a business customer. Okay, so just as a bit of a wording, in terms of this, to prove you're a business, you don't have to prove that you're a business in terms of you've, you've got a VAT number, you just have to show that you're a business rather than the consumer. So that one is false. Now, in terms of these next parts, what we're looking at is whether they are looking at a business to business transaction or a business to consumer transaction. Okay, so we're just looking at services here. So UK business, we've got UK VAT service received from an overseas supplier. So our overseas supplier, so that we're treating as a business. So we're a business, we're receiving it from a business. So it's a business to business. So if it's business to business for services, then it's where the customer is. We are the customer, we are in the UK. So therefore, there is UK VAT charged. Then we've got next example. Overseas VAT is charged on a service being provided to an overseas supplier to a UK individual. So in this case, it's not to us as a business, it's us to us as a consumer. So it's business to consumer. Okay, so we've got In this question, is there overseas VAT or is a UK VAT? We are a consumer. So it's where the original business is that's supplying it. So therefore, that business is overseas. So therefore, there is overseas VAT rather than any UK VAT. Okay. And then we've got a UK supplier must charge the UK rate UK VAT on a service supplied to a an overseas individual. So again, this is the same idea, but we are the business in this case to a consumer that is overseas. So therefore, it is if it's business to consumer, it's where the business is located. Okay, so where the supply is happening is where the supplier is. So therefore, yes, that's in the UK. So there is a UK VAT charged. Then finally, supply to an overseas individual is treated as supplying where the customer belongs. No, if it's to an individual, it's where the original business is. Okay, so it's where the supplier is rather than where the customer is. Okay, then final points. We've got the idea of this business making standard rating supplies in the UK. They're importing from overseas. They would be standard rated, they're imported, and we would have VAT at 6,200. What would be the effect? Now, this is the same as we looked at in the example before, is that we'd have our VAT charged either when they are purchased and come into the UK or 
we can do the idea of the postponed accounting, whichever way we do it, there'll be no net VAT effect. Okay, there will be both input and output VAT charged, either at the same time by the postponed accounting or with some time delay if we originally paying it when they come in and then we reclaim it on the next VAT return. But overall, there'll be no net VAT charged. Finally, example, the idea of if we've got that overseas purchase, what are the two examples? Well, we've said that we pay when they enter the UK and then we reclaim it on our next return as input VAT. Or we don't physically pay, but we account for it as output tax and then reclaim it as input tax. That's the idea of our postponed accounting. Okay, so that is the same as the example up here, just reworded in terms of how we can answer it. So those are the two options we've got. Either we pay for the VAT when they come into the UK and then reclaim it on the next return, or we just do it all on one return under our postponed accounting. So our next return, we'd have both output VAT and input VAT for the VAT on those goods. Okay. Have we got any other questions at the moment, Jaden? before I move on and look at the tasks and look at those bits on de minimis. Okay, well, what I'll do is if I talk about the minimus stuff and then if you've got anything by the end of that that have come through, then we can go through those then. Do that. Excellent. So the idea of the de minimis rules is the fact of well, what happens if you've got um, both uh, taxable and exempt supplies. So if you've got taxable supplies and you've got exempt supplies, so if you're registered for VAT and you're making most things that are both taxable and exempt, so you'll be charging VAT on the things that are taxable you won't be charging VAT on the things that are exempt. Now, you'll then have things that you are purchasing. Okay, so you'll have stuff that you're purchasing and that'll be, you'll be paying VAT on those. And what we need to say is, well, how much of that VAT can I reclaim? And what we do is we say, well, of the things that we are purchasing, things that we can say that are attributable to, to the, taxable supplies, we work out what's the VAT related to that. We then also look at what's the idea of things that are attributable to exempt supplies and work out how much VAT is on that. And then there's stuff that fits in, in between. So stuff that we can't say is attributable to taxable work we do, things that are attributable to exempt supplies. So it might be things like the heating of the building. Okay, so we can't say that it's that's all for taxable or that's all for exempt. So we look at it and we say, well, right, how much is related to taxable? How much is related to exempt? And we proportion it out into amounts that are for taxable and amounts that are for exempt. So that is the proportion we can do. So we've got here a certain amount here. So we've got a bit that's related to both. And we can apportion that out into exempt and into taxable. Now, anything that fits into here, so this side, we can always recover. Now, anything that's over here, on the whole, is irrecoverable. Okay, so that amounts we can't recover. But there are what's called the de minimis rules. And what it says is, is that we can reclaim any amounts that fall into this area so long as we um, fit into what are these de minimis rules. And the de minimis rules are that we've got um, input tax of less than 
625 pounds per month okay so remember if you're looking at the vat return often the vat returns are done for a quarter so you might need to work it out how much it is per month and okay we're looking at the exempt part and if the exempt input tax sorry exempt sorry exempt input tax is less than 65 per month and it's less than 50 percent of all the input tax. Okay, so if you look at the input tax as a whole, as long as the bit that's related to exempt is less than £625 per month and it's less than 50% of the whole of the input tax, so for the um, bit that's related to taxable and the bit that's related to exempt, okay, then you can reclaim all of your input tax. If either of these rules don't apply, okay, so if it doesn't, if it's not less than 625 or it's not less than 50% of our input tax, then the only bit you can reclaim is just the bit related to the taxable supplies. Okay, so you can always reclaim the bit that's related to taxable supplies. You can only claim the bits that are related to exempt if they pass the de minimis rules, which are the less than £625 per month or less than 50% of total input tax. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question. If you've got any other points about it or anything else, then do make a comment and we can come on to it a bit later if needs be. Okay. Have we got anything else at the moment, Jane, or should we carry on? look at one of the tasks okay Excellent. so let's have a look and we'll have a look at uh, a couple of the tasks or one of the tasks and we'll have a look at a couple of examples now in terms of questions in terms of tasks within this course and within all the courses there's a few things that i always say to the students are that you should always follow four rules. And I think three of them apply in particular to um, AAT. And I think um, with the other levels and the other uh, types of exam, then there is a fourth one that I normally include as well. And the things that I always say is always remember these things. And they are RTQ, ATQ, and KISS. Um, the fourth one is um, always try and relate it back to the question. It doesn't necessarily as much include in terms of AT. It does come in later on in terms of bits of AT, but it doesn't, it's not particularly covered in um, this particular course. But these three here, so RTQ, ATQ, and KISS. So RTQ, I've always read the question. Make sure you're checking what is the question asking me? What have I got to answer about it? ATQ of answer the question. So what is the question asking me to write down? Yes, I've read what it's about, but effectively exa exactly what is it asking me to include? Okay, are there any specific things that it says I need to do this? And we'll look at that in one of the examples in a little bit. And then finally, the idea of KISS, which is the idea of keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate. Don't try and overthink things in terms of um, your answers too much. Okay, so yes, think, well, what's the logic? What's the understanding? What do I need to include here? But don't try and take it too far each time. They're not trying to effectively trick you too much in terms of the answers. Okay, and I'll talk to that, especially with the first part of the question and um, all the tasks that we're going to look at next. So, in terms of that, we've got our example here. So as I said, we've got there are um, tasks involved in this. There are eight tasks that you'll have in terms of your exam. Um, a couple of the tasks, particularly, I think, two, four and five, looking at um, how people have been scoring over the um, last well, year or so, I'll have long as the course has been out now. Um, these are the ones, the two, four and five have been the ones that people have been uh, finding a bit harder, okay, and talking to them and looking at the results. And so I'm going to look at the task four in particular, and we'll have a look at it in terms of how we answer and what we need to include. 
So the question we've got here, we're looking at our VAT return ending the 30th of September 2021. Okay, so we're looking at the quarter ending 30th of September 2021. So we're looking for anything that's in the three months up to 30th of September 2021. So for July, August and September. So which of these won't be required to help us fill in our VAT return or look at our VAT return? So firstly, well, we've got stuff that's in July, August, September. So they've not made it really easy by including something that's nothing to do with any of our quarter. That would have been too nice. We then say, well, right, which of these do we not need in terms of working out our VAT? So we've got, I'm going to work upwards, we've got our bank records. Now the bank records are going to show all the income we've had in, in that quarter, all of the expenses we've got in that quarter. So therefore they're going to be useful to be able to reconcile back to other parts of our VAT return and make sure that we're including everything in terms of our VAT return. So we are going to include our bank records. The sales invoices. OK, so the sales invoices are going to tell us well, how much output VAT have we charged on any of our invoices in August 2021. So, yes, we're going to look at that because that will tell us we can reconcile back to those. Then we've got this idea of the inventory records. Now, in terms of the inventory records, so how much inventory I've got at the beginning, how much inventory I've got at the end, and maybe what's happened, what's issued, anything that's changed in terms of that. Now, there's nothing there that's going to help me in terms of reconciling my return on the face of it. OK, and that's exactly what they're getting to in terms of the question. OK, so there's no VAT charge in terms of the changes in my inventory to the actual amounts. Yes, there'll be purchases and things, but those will be included in my purchase invoices and in my bank records. The inventory records themselves won't include any information about that. So that is the one which I won't require. So that's the idea of the idea of keeping it simple. Don't overthink about well, how much stuff is to be included in the inventory records. Well, I could then check that against my purchase invoices and I need that. No, don't overthink it. Just go with the one that is the obvious answer in terms of that. OK, so that is the first part. We've then got a bit of calculations. And working out whether we're looking at input or output tax. So. We've got. Excuse me, we've got errors on our previous quarter's return. What do we need to do? So we've got a credit note. OK, so we've got a credit note to a customer. And it's for £384, including VAT. So it's a credit note to a customer, including VAT. Now, well, what? Um, this has not been posted at all. OK, so it's not been included. So we need to include it now. We need to make our adjustment. So we need to work out well, how much the adjustment for. And. Whether it's affecting our input or output and whether it's going to decrease it or increase it. Now. We've got this value of three hundred eighty four pounds and we're told it's at standard rate. So this is. Standard rate, so therefore at 20%. So our figure of 384 includes VAT at 20%. So therefore, effectively, 120% is 384 pounds. So I want to know what the VAT part of that is. So I take my 384, I divide by 120, my VAT is at 20%, and multiply it by 20. And therefore, I do that and I get a value of £64. So if I put a value of £64 there. I then say, well, right, is that going to change my input or my output tax? So it's a credit note. And this is where we're going back to the idea of knowing your bookkeeping ideas and thinking about well, what I would I do in terms of bookkeeping in this case. So if you had a credit note. OK, so you sent your credit note to the customer. Effectively, that is meaning that we've got less in terms of our sales. OK, so it would be 
reducing your sales in terms of that credit name. So the VAT does this follows the same idea as that. OK, so if I had a credit note, we reduce sales. So where does the sales go? So the sales goes into my output tax. So I'm going to reduce my output tax. So I'm going to decrease my output tax. Now, I as well purposefully have missed something out. That idea that I said before, I talked about the idea because the idea of ATQ, so answer the question. Now the question says, calculate the adjustment, round my answer to the nearest penny. Now the answer is 64 pounds. If you've not written 64 pounds and included the pence, you've effectively thrown away a mark. Okay, so you've worked out, you've done the hard work work 64. If you've not included the 0 0.00, you're not gonna get the mark. Okay, so just be careful, make sure you've answered the question completely. Um, and then the second part, we've got the idea of our purchase invoice. So we've got a supplier for 5,200 exclusive of that this time. It was standard rated, but it was not posted. So we've got a purchase we haven't included at 5,200. So this is exclusive of VAT. So we want to know what 20% of that value is. So 20 over 100 times by my 5,200 which gives me a value of 1,040 pounds. Now, this is a purchase. So purchases affect my input tax. It's an amount that I haven't included. So it's gonna increase, oops, increase my input tax. Okay, so increase my input. And so that's that part and we'll have a look at the final part and then we'll see if we've got any more questions so this covers the bit we looked at earlier on so we've got the import of goods from overseas it's the first time i've had to deal with the imports is unsure of the treatments which of the following statements regarding imports are true or false so we've got import of goods Okay, so remember we're talking about goods. So VAT is designed to apply the same rate as it would have done if the goods have been purchased inside the UK. Yeah, that is true. So we treat it at the same rate as if we purchased them here. We can VAT can now apply using postponed accounting, which means that VAT is paid up front and then reclaimed later. Now again, just make sure that in terms of this, you are reading question or reading what it says we can now do postponed accounting and if you just read that part you may take well yeah we can do that that's fine and then that says which means that VAT is up front and reclaim later no postponed accounting is where we do it all later on we don't pay anything up front okay so that's a mixing the two ideas that you could have and then VAT on imports will appear both as output and input section on the VAT return yes that's true whichever way you do it then they will appear as both output and input. So number three or part three here is true. Okay, uh, Jane, have we got any questions or comments or anything that, at the moment before we go on final task we'll have a look at? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Um, so in terms of it, there will be um be eight tasks in terms of your exam, and in terms of the calculations and words, there will be a mixture of both. Um, in terms of, of what's included, as I said, this is the kind of example in terms of what you've got. So you've got a wordy part to start with. You've got another wordy part at the end. You've got a few calculations to include in the middle. OK, so there will be calculations involved in terms of that. One thing to say, as I said at the beginning, 
also with the payroll um, they can ask you now questions about calculators as well and I think compared with um, previous times um, and how this has kind of been examined before there is more emphasis on calculating kind of changes and adjustments and that side of it rather than before where it was just trying to work out what the VAT is on this add it up put it in a box so there's a bit more uh, complexity in terms of sort of this part of part B so that part um, is coming more common in terms of the um, kind of questions they're going to be asking Excellent. Yeah, no, I completely, completely agree with that. And we will say to any of the students that we have is, yes, we do have our own materials and we go through that and we have our own questions like these and we have our own sort of mock exams and mock assessments that we provide as well. But also we always say as well, do use the AT resources as well and, um, and look at those online as well. OK. OK, we've got a few few minutes left, so let's have a, a quick look at this final example. So again, same idea, same process in terms of what we've before. What are we not including in terms of here? It's for September, so it's anything that's included in the quarter of September. So July, August, September, which is all of these options. What do we not include? Well, we said that, yes, bank records we need to include because they'll tell us about all of our purchases, of our expenses um, and all of our uh, sales. Sorry invoices which will tell us how much our um, output taxes that we've charged now depreciation has nothing to do with VAT so therefore we don't care about that in terms of our VAT return so we wouldn't need to have any information about that then we've got in terms of our adjustments idea so same as we looked at before we've got a quarterly telephone bill was missed OK, so the invoice was for 500 plus VAT. So in terms of that, we want to know, well, what is our amount? So we've got our 500 is our amount is 100 percent. So divide that by 100, multiply it by 20 will tell us that we've got an amount of um, 100 pounds. Again, will be to nearest penny. What's that going to do? Well, we've missed off an expense, so it's going to increase our input VAT. And then the next part is this part here, of just making sure again, this one, read the question carefully. We've seen the words credit note, but just saying that's from a supplier. So we have bought something, they have sent us a credit note, so we effectively bought less than um, we originally did. So therefore, this is for 750 inclusive of a VAT. So the VAT on it, so that includes the VAT at 20%. So 750 divided by 120 multiplied by 20 will tell us that we got an amount of 125 pounds. So 125 pounds. Now, this is from a supplier. So we've decreased the amount we've purchased. So we're going to decrease the amount of input tax that we would have. Okay, so just be careful. Make sure you read the question carefully and check exactly what it's answering. And then finally, it's the last part. We've got the idea of right. We've got so what will be the changes in terms of output and input tax? If there's no change, then you enter 0.00. .00. So that's again making sure you're reading the question answering the question i've got payments to a credit supplier totaling 150 
and we're saying that the VAT was at standard rate. Well, this is a payment. Now, in terms of when you're putting stuff onto your VAT return, if you're doing a normal VAT return, it's going to be done on the accruals basis. So the um, invoice that you've received, okay, will have you'd have already included it on your VAT return based on the invoice that you received from them. So therefore, when you make the payment, it doesn't matter because you've already dealt with the VAT. So there's no changes to my VAT return. Now we've got proceeds from a sale of fixtures and fittings at £600. Originally, so we had claimed VAT on the original purchase. If there was VAT originally, then there's VAT on the sale. And therefore we need to include what the VAT is. So we've got £600 inclusive. So 600 divided by 120 multiplied by our 20 tells us that we've got £100 of output because effectively we've made another sale and it won't affect our input tax. And then finally, part three, we've got a direct debit for a payment of electricity of £525. Supporting documentation shows VAT at 5%. Now just be careful with this idea. Even though it's for a payment, because it's a direct debit payment, so it's something we're paying monthly, Okay, so if it's something that is for a continual basis service, okay, so we're receiving electricity on a continual basis, then we include it. So the tax point for that service is when the payment is made or when you have the invoice, whichever is sooner. So normally with your electricity, you're going to be paying for it up front. Okay, therefore, the payment is likely to be sooner. So therefore, we work out what the VAT on it is. So 525. Um, we want to know what our VAT is so at 5%. So that's at 105 divided by 105 times by 5 gives us a value of £25 of input tax that we include. But just be careful with that one. Because it's a continual service, then the tax point, so the basic tax point, is when the payment is being made for it. Okay, and that is everything that I wanted to go through. And I will hand back to, to Jaden. give an opportunity for some questions at the end if you wish if not then uh, we will sign off but I'll, I'll give it a moment whilst I'm waiting I will just do you know a little bit of an outro a little bit of a plug if you will so again Jack is from First Intuition uh, if you are interested in any of the materials that you've seen here definitely feel free to sign up with them a great training provider and you'll definitely get excellent support if you decide to go with them so i will have a link for first intuition uh, after this you can click on that go on their website and you can have a look uh, at their packages and see if that's something you're interested in uh, for ourselves of course i would say follow us on our socials so you'll see of course you're already here on facebook but we are on twitter we are on instagram we're also on tiktok so definitely give us a follow on all the socials if you're interested in this type of content but um, yeah, if you don't have any further questions, so we can sign off. Thank you again, Jack, for coming. It was a pleasure working with you. No, thank you. Thank you very much. And all right, guys, uh, until next time, thank you again. And we're signing off. See you guys later.